Well, we've talked about how to deal with esters, and there's one more type left. Do you remember what these are called? Uh, a me? Right. And is it is it? I believe the two uh, pronunciations are uh, amide or amide. Okay. Amide or amide. And we don't want to confuse that with this fun excuse me, this functional group. What would be the name of this functional group? In a mean. Right. And we don't want to confuse that with this functional group. Remember what the name of this functional group is when we have a carbon double bonded to a nitrogen. This comes up when you have a category three attack on aldehydes and ketones, when you have an amine attacking an aldehyde or a ketone. This is an imine. I just wanted to mention this now because people tend to confuse that with these other terms. This is an imine. Again, this is what you would get from a category three attack of a primary amine on an aldehyde or a ketone. I guess this should be it. One, two, three bonds. All right, that's right. And one more name that we don't want to get confused. Notice that here we have a amine group and also a carbon double bond. Do you remember what do we call it when we have an amine group on the carbon double bond? There's a name for that as well. Um, it's category four, and it's yeah. uh, in, in amine or right. To me, it's, I, I'm not sure what the right pronunciation is, but to me, the most logical pronunciation is enamine, because the en here stands for alkene. Uh -huh. you, would, you would pronounce it alkene, so it's logical to me to pronounce this enamine. I don't know if that's conventional or not. So, uh, so here's four names that people tend to confuse. So try not to get those confused with each other. This is an enamine. And you were correct. This is what you would get from a category four attack of a secondary amine on an aldehyde or a ketone. But these are not carboxylic acid derivatives. This is the one we're focusing on here. And those don't have to be hydrogens. Those can be two carbon chains. Correct? Yeah, that's a good point. In fact, we'll have to deal with that when we're doing nomenclature. It's a good thing to remember. Uh, these could have been carbon chains as well. That's right. Now, the suffix for amides is very easy to remember. The suffix for amides. It's amide. So for once the chemist came up with something simple. The suffix for amides is amide. This has four carbons, so we would call it bute. There's no double bonds, so we would call it an rather than ene. And the suffix is amide. So this would be butanamide. And amide is always on the number one carbon, so there's no need for a locator here. So this is butanamide. Let's give a name to this one. carbons, and because there's no double bonds, and amide. That's right, propanamide. Uh, let's try this one. Uh, 
It's anamide? S and amide. Good. Or is there then a common? Is there? Yep. So let's see if we can figure out that common name. Well, we'll do the root. Mm -hmm. Acid. Two carbons, so it's acet. And then we need to figure out the suffix. I'm not quite sure myself. Looks like the suffix is just amide. That's a pretty commonly used common name. Acetamide. This one looks a little weird, but we can name it using the same exact principles as the others that we've named. There's only one carbon, just the carbonyl carbon. So it's meth, and, because there's no double bonds, and then amide. Methanamide. Uh, good. Now, just like people commonly use asset to mean two carbons, there's also a common root that's used for one carbon. You might have seen the other series of videos. Form. Form. That's right. So what would be the common name for this? Um, if this is acetamide, we can follow the same pattern here. Form, formamide, or amide. Formamide. That sounds a little weird, but yeah, that's right, formamide. There's no am in this name, just formamide. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is an actual compound that you can form in the lab or not, but if you could, this would be the name for it. So just like acet means two carbons, except for acetone, form always means one carbon. Now we have to deal with an issue that you already raised. What if some of these H's here are really carbon chains? Then we have to include those in the name. This is still an amide, but now the nitrogen only has one hydrogen and also has a carbon chain. Okay. Well, how would we name the main chain here? What would be a good name for the main chain? Um, propanamide? That's right. And it doesn't matter that this is longer. This is still the main chain because it has the carbonyl. The main chain always has the carbonyl, even if the, the L group over here is longer. The main chain here is propanamide. Now, how are we going to name this carbon chain? Well, the convention is that it's named as a substituent. It's simply named as a substituent. Well, how would we name a four-carbon chain as a substituent? What's the name for a four-carbon substituent? Butyl. Just butyl. This is still part of the regular name. But now we have to say what the location of it is. And normally, we use numbers to give locations. But here, they came up with a clever trick. This is called and butyl propanamide to indicate that the substituent is not on the main chain, but it's on this nitrogen over here. Uh, in the past, we've always used numbers as locators, and here we're just using an N for the nitrogen. So this would be N butyl propanamide, all one word. So let's give a name to this one. Good. And propyl butanamide. That's right. 